uh, just to give you an overview of our talk first, uh, we are going to first discuss the pedagogical and theoretical frameworks that influence the development of our classroom-based research study, which was on a much smaller scale than what Neil and Kristen have presented. And then we will give more details of that study, including results and strategies for future implementation. The main question that we examine is to what extent a multimodal approach to a non-digital literary text can allow students of German with various levels of language background to access that text in a meaningful way to them, while at the same time broadening their cultural awareness. Okay, um, in order to address this issue, like the other presenters, um, we drew from a student-driven um, pedagogy of multiliteracies in which um, language and other modes of meaning are dynamic representations, representational resources constantly being remade by their users as they work to achieve the various culture purposes. Um, a literacy-based approach to L2 education emphasizes the linguistic and cultural conventions of the target language and context and relies on the integration of reading, writing, listening, speaking, and viewing in a dynamic process of meaning making. Furthermore, as Nolan and Crumch argue, each individual reader of a text approaches the text from their own unique position. And it is precisely this individualized positioning that we as L2 educators must learn to anticipate in a literacy-based classroom, in particular when analyzing literary text. Um, the job of L2 educators is thus to ratify um, readers as participant users, that is, legitimatize um, the resources that learners rely on to create meaning of and with the various forms of the language with which they are confronted on a daily basis in the classroom and outside. New forms of language and modes of communication are constantly facilitated through the technological advances that characterize the 21st century lifestyle. Thus, the MLA report um, from 2007 highlighted as one of the main goals of L2 education in the US an intensified focus on the development of transcultural understanding, namely the ability to comprehend and analyze the cultural narratives that appear in every kind of expressive form. This view of transcultural understanding recognizes that there is more to communication um, than language alone, and thus requires the integration of multimodal and symbolic skills into the L2 classroom. Our study draws on an understanding of intercultural competence as the circulation of values and identities across cultures, um, the inversions, even inventions of meaning, often hidden behind a common illusion of effective communication. According to this view of intercultural competence, there is a deeper um, level to transcultural understanding than just the successful communication of cultural information or facts. Rather, learners must be challenged to consider the visual, gestural, audio, and spatial dimensions of communication, including computer-mediated communication. These additional layers of meaning are particularly important for the kind of multimodal approach to literature that we propose. Students are asked to interpret and produce texts which in integrate visual and verbal modalities. In doing so, they have the opportunity to go beyond the text and create personal connections to the target culture based on their own multimodal visualizations thereof. This corresponds with Kress and Van Leeuwen's discussion of design patterns as visual structures that assist learners in realizing ways of representing the world. These are, however, not merely representations of reality, but through these design patterns, actual images of reality are produced. Our study draws on this premise, as well as a view of culture as symbolically mediated through words, sounds, and images. Through the multimodal approach to literature that we present, um, L2 learners are engaged in the symbolic power game of challenging established meanings and redefining the real. In this manner, learners are developing a symbolic sense of um, symbolic competence and interculturality that is crucial for navigating the multilingual, multimodal world in which they live today, even if they never have the opportunity to study abroad. Diane will now introduce our study. So the pilot study was conducted in a fifth semester language and culture course required for all German majors and minors at a large public university in the US Southwest during sp <laughs> spring 2014. Uh, the six credit course met five days a week over a 16 week semester and was co-instructed by Lydia and I. Nine of 13 enrolled students gave permission for their submissions to be used as data. The language background of the students varied greatly 
Roughly half of the students had previously only formally uh, learned German for four semesters at the university and had not spent time abroad. One student had participated in an intensive summer study abroad course offered by the university, and at least two other students had also been to German-speaking countries during summer trips throughout Europe. Three students had learned German in high school prior to taking college courses, and one student had spent an entire year in Germany as an exchange student. The general course description and objectives included in the syllabus written by our supervisor, Dr. Chantal Warner, states, in this course, we will work together to strengthen your interpretive abilities, your spoken and written German, and your understanding of linguistic nuances and the effects they have on meaning. We will discuss a variety of texts, films, images, and songs, and we will try to find innovative ways in which to engage with our familiar presuppositions about who we are, about what determines our values and actions, and about the function and power of language. And interestingly enough, there is never the word culture in there. <laughs> so. um, the majority of the readings in the course were from were literary texts from a textbook called Mitlis and Mitteilen, and that was supplemented by other texts and films including the literary text for our pilot study, which had been used in past semesters with various learning objectives and assessment measures. Uh, due to previous experiences teaching the text in question, we wanted to create and implement new learning objectives for the unit in order to assist students of various levels navigating it in interpretive and creative ways according to their individual strengths. Before we talk more about the study, we want to introduce you to the book to the text, but instead of telling you what it's about, we would like you to guess, yeah? <laughs> a little interaction on Friday afternoon. <laughs> um, and we would like you to guess based on pictures provided by our students. Um, so feel free to shout out your associations of what these pictures, uh, uh, of what you see here and what they might mean, what the story might be about. Um, I think you can. Okay, yeah, trains and transportation, right? <laughs> okay. So something with traveling, <laughs> yeah? You might not be able to read this one, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So <laughs> there you go. Social skills, right? The, you see the arrow of this person hugging himself, dancing alone, <laughs> right? <laughs> then even if you don't speak German, you might be able to pick up on some clues here. Yeah, I heard migrants, Turkish. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it is the the one on your right? I think. Does that seem positive or negative? <laughs> Something's not going right. <laughs> yeah. Then we have these two. <laughs> Unemployment, why do you think that? Do you speak German? <laughs> okay. The haves and have this, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, sorry? Social class, okay, yeah. And maybe also a little bit of irony with the, the perfect bill and the inequality that we see on the other side. And then finally, <laughs> greetings, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so greetings, uh, cultural differences in greetings and social um, uh, norms. Mm. Right, those are all of the, 
the pictures that we have for this series. Is there anyone who would like to attempt to put all of those together in a summary of what the story could be? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> would you like to try? Yeah? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Can I go? <laughs> Kristen, <laughs> I'm calling on you. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly, um, you have um, done what we ask of our students to do to create their own version of the story, so each interpretation is acceptable and Great, <laughs> and but you did a very great job of summarizing the book, which is called uh, Mein Deutsches Dschungelbuch, My German Jungle Book. Um, one more. <laughs> It was written by Vladimir Kaminer, who is a uh, Russian-born Jewish-German writer, and he's chronicling his journeys throughout Germany. Each chapter in the book is dedicated to one or two German towns or cities and is jam-packed with multiple complex socio-historical and cultural references. Uh, Lydia is now going to give you an overview of the unit that we um, introduce this book in. So the overall approach of the pilot study was to examine to what extent um, a multimodal approach to teaching a non-digital text promotes intercultural awareness. To achieve this goal, um, the following learning objectives for the unit were identified. We wanted our students to detect underlying intercultural and social historical meanings of a literary text, make the target culture more accessible through visualization, create an individualized symbolic representation of the target culture and highlight the multimodal, uh, the multiple yet sometimes still similar meanings that various learners identify with the text. For each of the 10 chapters in the three week unit, students created their own vocabulary list and marked on a map of Germany, the town or city Kamina visited in the respective chapter. What was new to the prompt was that students wrote one to two sentence, um, sentences about what they personally um, thought was the most important event and found a picture that they felt illustrated it best. These pictures you have now seen. Um, these entries were posted to forums on the online course learning platform. The forums were private, um, so the students were not influenced by their colleagues' ideas. Uh, students were expected to post um, an hour before class, so we had time to skim uh, through their posts and identify what aspects might be relevant or might need more attention. Um, so each class period began with a brief discussion of two or three of the pictures, which the instructors showed using a projector. These entries were the basis of the data analysis that Diane will now outline. So we um, started by obviously downloading the entries of participating students from the online course learning platform and assigning student code names. We translated the student comments into English with as little variation from the wording used by the students as possible and wrote brief descriptions of the pictures they had posted. Then we uh, created charts looking for links, existing or non-existing correlations between student comments, pictures, and events in the book. And then finally, we coded the comments and pictures for evidence of conceptual development and multimodal learning according to six, six stages of progress that we had developed that wasn't meant as a rubric uh, not as a means of assessment or grading, students were graded solely on um, completion. And it is important to note that the title of each chapter includes a keyword from the chapter as well as the name of the town or city that, that Kamina visited. And as Lydia will show in the following data excerpts, the keywords and city names tended to largely influence the pictures posted by the students. Okay, so stage zero um, was when they didn't upload anything or the picture didn't upload properly. <laughs> stage one, um, 
Here's an example of stage one, um, which shows an initial geographical learning progress through the visualization of um, a German town in this first entry. Stefan wrote, for example, Kamina travels um, to explore and see Weikersheim. Kamina finds a small city with vineyards and the smallest cultural office in Germany. And he posts this picture of the castle in Weikersheim. Um, rather than writing about one specific event, Stefan gave uh, more of a summary of the chapter. And the picture that he chose um, had no direct connection to his post since the castle wasn't mentioned. And it was a keyword in the title. OK, so stage two. Um, which shows an initial cultural learning progress because the visualiz visualization was of a regional product um, and not a geographical location. And we considered this a higher stage of learning than posting a picture of the city in the title because students were already required to mark the city on a map of Germany. And the picture that Holly posted um, was of Quittenschnaps, which is Quinsnaps. Um, and this is a regional product of the city of Weikersheim. And she wrote, Kamina goes on his journey through Germany. He introduces, um, he is introduced to the culture and is less afraid. Again, there was no direct connection between the written entry and the picture of Quittenschnaps, um, and this was also a keyword from the title. Diane, wanna conclude? Um, so, stage three marks the intermediate learning progress through establishing a general connection between the visualization and the written entry about a meaningful event from the chapter, which for Aneta was the intertextual reference that Kaminer makes about a statement made by Japanese tourists in Berlin. As she said in her third entry, mm, Kamina is reminded of this, of this statement when he sees Japanese tourists in the small southern town of Rotenburg, which is the main focus of the chapter. She wrote, in the last sentence, Kamina says the same things that the Japanese had said. Throughout the entire chapter, Kamina was lost in thought about the Japanese, and this sentence shows that he had learned from the Japanese. Mm. So Annette posted a picture of a Japanese tourist, which shows a semi-direct connection between the ent entry and an event in the book. Um, but still, Yapana, the German word for Japanese, was also the keyword in the title. Um, this is an example also from the chapter on Rotenburg uh, about uh, of stage four, or the intermediate advanced learning progress. Uh, the learner was able to draw broader connections between the visualization of an event in the text and a personally meaningful event from his own past. Mark wrote in his third entry, I think that the description of the Japanese at the beginning of the chapter is very important to understand who they are as tourists and what the Germans think about them. And then he quotes Kamina, after 8 p.m., all Japanese tourists disappear without a trace from the streets. Uh, while he does not directly reference his personal experience, he posted a picture of himself in what looks like Rotenburg, um, the chapter for which this entry was written. So then uh, what we defined as stage five is um, the learner shows advanced learning progress through deeper understanding of an important event in the chapter, either in the visualization or written entry, but there may be a disconnect between visualization written entry and or chapter event. In his fourth entry, Janosch chose the picture of people protesting at the University of Halle and wrote, in Halle, Kaminer learned about the investments of Indians in Halle after the reunification. The citizens of Halle protest against the foreigners because they are poor after the reunification. Uh, so this written entry indicates a slight disconnect to the event in the chapter on Halle, in which there were no actual Indians, just a comparison by the author of the West Germans to Indians. <laughs> However, through the picture, Jano shows his understanding of the essence of the chapter, namely the discontent amongst the people of Halle that Kamino describes. And since we had seen this entry prior to class, we were able to clarify the Indian reference. Um, the highest level, stage six, shows highly advanced learning progress through establish, establishing complex connections between the visualization, a personally meaningful event from the text, and the written entries. For example, Mark wrote in the final entry of the unit, 
I think it's funny that Camino sat with four or five people, and when it was time to pay, they were all gone. He says, but for me, they didn't get a cent, but at the end, he paid for their drinks. And he posted this picture of a receipt of a very expensive meal in Germany. Mm. <laughs> and um, so we see that Mark chose a specific event from the book that he personally found funny, showing that he understood Camino's ironic tone and selected a picture from the target culture that il illustrated precisely that event. All in all, eight of the nine participants um, made considerable learning progress over the course of the unit. As this chart shows, pictures that student po students posted for the first entry of the unit were mostly representations of cultural information or visual, visual translations of the title, see stages one and two, with few links created um, to written reflections. So at the beginning of the unit, students mostly did not get beyond the cultural and geographical surface information provided by the author. The fourth entry makes the first peak, marks the first peak of the student's learning progress. Seven of the nine consenting students reached the two advanced stages, namely five and six, of learning in that entry. By the last entry of the unit, not a single picture of the city in the title, which was Frankfurt, was posted. Most of the students reached the highest stages possible several times throughout the unit. Of the two weakest students in, cl in the class, one had joined the course several weeks late and did not make it past um, the third intermediate learning stage. This student was consistently posting pictures from either the place or the keyword in the chapter title. Despite an intervention of one of the instructors after entry four, the student did not advance beyond the surface level of understanding, yet was still able to make connections appropriate to his language level. The other weaker student, however, showed exceptional learning progress, making it to the highest stage in five out of 10 times. For this student, choosing a personally meaningful event from the chapter and visualizing it was a very good approach to understanding the gist of an otherwise very complex chapter. Overall, the multimodal approach to literature and interculturality used in this pilot study allowed students of various language backgrounds to achieve the learning objectives of the unit according to their own learning level. But we have some suggestions for future implementation, which Diana will state now. So more time. <laughs> of course, more instructor intervention and more explicit integration of the pictures chosen by the students are the main suggestions that we have. Uh, for example, students from previous semesters could be invited into the classroom to introduce the unit. Those students would act as experts showing the pictures from their class and the current students could speculate on what the book might be about. Oh, similar to what you all did earlier. Um, and uh, just a few more suggestions would uh, include regarding assessment for this uh, unit, uh, a reflective element in which students look at all of their pictures or certain pictures posted by their classmates and directly reflect on the various meanings found in and is illustrated by the pictures, as well as a follow-up project in which they could do a multimodal analysis similar to what uh, Neil suggested at the end of his uh, presentation earlier. Um, and just a few more concluding thoughts. What do yes, you since we are running out of time. Um, so throughout the unit presented here, students were developing multiliteracies um, while participating as active collaborators in the development of classroom materials. This multimodal method allowed even the less advanced um, learners to realize various ways in which they themselves as well as the fellow students make meaning that was most important to us. So moreover, um, the pictures of the, ch the students chose to represent their understanding of literary texts led to the explorations of issues related to interculturality that otherwise would not have been addressed since instructors can and do not always anticipate the various interpretations that learners have of a text. Um, so due to the nature of the task presented here, students did not have to rely on what was explicitly stated within the text to offer response. Um, rather, they were able to look beyond the text and to invent or invert meanings, as well as their own symbolic representation of the culture. So we thank you for listening to us. Um, those are our sources, and we say Dankeschön. <laughs> thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have no...